and welcome back to my obsession with paranormal romance. I am talking to you today about Laurel K. Hamilton, the Anita Blake series. Let me tell you a little bit about Laurel before we get started. We are going moving on to the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth books in the series, the Anita Blake series, like I said. So Laurel K. Hamilton is a writer and a novelist. Laurel K. Hamilton, born February 19, 1963, is an American fantasy and romance writer. She is best known for the, as the author of two series of stories. Her New York Times bestselling Anita Blank Vampire Hunter series centers on Anita Blake, a professional zombie raiser, vampire ex executioner, and supernatural consultant for the police, which includes novels, short story collections, and comic books. Six million copies of Anita Blake novels are in print. Her Mary Gentry series centers on Meredith, Meredith Gentry, Princess of the Unseely Court of Fairy, a private detective facing repeated assassination attempts. Both fantasy series follow the protagonists as they gain in power and deal with the dangerous realities of worlds in which creatures of legend live. And then this is a little different. Laurel K. Hamilton was born Laurel K. Klein in Herber Springs, Arkansas, but grew up in Sims, in Indiana with her grandmother, Laurel Gentry. Her education includes degrees in English and biology from Marion College, now called Indiana Wesleyan University, a private evangel evangelical Christian Liberal Arts College in Marion, Indiana, that is affiliated with the Wesleyan Church denomination. Um, she is married. Um, her husband's name is John, I believe. Sorry for the black and white, but my printer has decided it doesn't want to print in color, so I must be out of color ink. And that's not high on my priority list. I can't afford ink right now. So anyway, the... Um, as you know, the last book that I did was an omnibus, which is combined books in one volume. Uh, this one here is called The Midnight Cafe. Very heavy. And there is the artwork, if you're interested, if you know who Louis Royo is. Um, wonderful artist. I love his artwork. But that's who the artwork is by. And I'm guessing that this guy here is Jean-Claude. And this guy here would be Richard. And this, of course, is Anita. All right. So let's go on and talk about the, third, or the fourth book in the series, which is The Lunatic Cafe. And the last book that we talked about was The Circus of the Damned. And that was, uh, we kind of hinted about her meeting a new guy. Well, this tells more, goes more into his background and stuff, a little bit, starting. Anyway, the Lunatic Cafe, you get two pre-natural experts and one with Anita Blake, animator and vampire slayer. She's one of the good guys in the world full of bad things, a world that Laurel K. Hamilton makes spin in her New York Times best-selling novels. Now, Anita has fallen for the leader of a local pack of werewolves. That's who Richard is. She survived a lot, but love, but this love thing just may kill her. And then, um, and you don't fall in love with a werewolf. It interferes with your work, especially when you're a prenatural expert like me. My business brings me up close and personal with all shapes and sizes of monsters, and not all of them want to kill me. Take, for instance, the local pack of ly lycanthropes. They're werewolves to you. A number of them are missing, and they've come to me for help. Maybe because I'm dating the leader of the pack? I've survived a lot, from jealous vampires to killer zombies, and this love thing may kill me yet. This is the... I, and I'm so sorry about the black and white thing because this book um, I believe is kind of gold colored 
and then it's got the um, knife thing on the front, whatever, the shaving thing. I don't know what you call that, I guess. Anyway, that is the Lunatic Cafe. The next book we're going to talk about is the fifth in the series, and that is uh, Bloody Bones. Bloody Bones, when Anita Blake's boss at Animators Incorporated informs her that she's expected to raise a 300 raise 300 year old zombies from a field of jumbled bones just to settle a land dispute, she's understandably annoyed. But as soon as she arrives in Branson, Missouri to do the deed, the job gets more interesting. A psychotic, sword-wielding vampire starts committing multiple murders in the area, and Anita must call on Jean-Claude, her powerful, fanged suitor, for help. As always, Anita prevails over the undead, keeping Jean-Claude at arm's length, clearing the cemetery land of an ancient enchantment, and nailing the vampiric killer in one fell swoop. First, there were the dead in the graveyard. Two hundred years dead. I'd been hired to raise them to settle a dispute over who owned the land they were buried in. Then there were three dead teenagers in the woods, slaughtered in a way I've never seen before. And then there were and then they found the dead girl, drained of blood and left in her bed. I knew what that meant all right. It didn't take a degree in prenatural studies to figure out that something was very wrong in and around Branson, Missouri. My name is Anita Blake. Welcome to my life. This is Bloody Bones. Can't remember what color this was. And this one's got a knife on the front of it. All right. And the last one we're going to talk about today is um, The Killing Fields. And this is the sixth book in the series. So the kill... I'm sorry, not The Killing Fields. <laughs> I was thinking about a movie, I guess. The Killing Dance. The first hitman came after me at home, which should be against the rules. Then there was a second and a third. Eventually, I found out the word on the street was that Anita Blake, pre-natural expert and vampire killer extraordinaire, was worth half a million dollars. Dead. Dead, not alive. So what's a girl to do but turn to the men in her life for help? Which, in my case, means the alpha werewolf and a master vampire. With professional killers on your tail, it's not a bad idea to have as much protection as possible, human or otherwise. But I'm beginning to wonder if two, monst if two monsters are better than one. And this is the killing dance. And this is a real pretty blue. And this one here has got like a wine opener thingy on the front. Okay. So let's take another look at this book and let's read what it says on the inside. Probably about the same thing. The Midnight Cafe. My name's Anita Blank. Blank. Blake. And I'm a pre-natural expert. I raise the dead and kill vampires legally. In my business, you don't fall in love with a werewolf. It interferes with your work. Take, for instance, the case involving the Lunatic Cafe. A number of werewolves were missing, and some of the local pack came to me for help, maybe because I was dating their alpha male. I'd survived jealous vampires and killer zombies, but this love thing nearly killed me. Then there was the Bloody Bones job. It started when I was hired to raise the bed in an old Branson, Missouri graveyard. Three teenagers turned up gruesomely slaughtered in the woods nearby, and I knew that this was no ordinary vampire kill. I was up against something I'd never seen before, something old, long dormant, and even more powerful than my old friend, the master vampire, Jean-Claude. Lately, word on the street is that I'm worth a half a million dollars, dead or alive. With killers on her tail, what's a girl to do but turn to the men in her life? But I'm beginning to wonder if two monsters are better than one. The killing dance I understand, relationships I don't. So anyway, this is the Midnight Cafe, and it's all about the Lunatic Cafe, Bloody Bones, and kill it, the Killing Dance. So if you're interested, I will list these separately below, put a little bit, a little blurb in about each one. If you've read these, let me know what you thought. I am in love with this series. So more next time, um, starting with book seven. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.